praise the Lord as we remain as we stand. Come on, brother, brother Allen, and give us our opening prayer. We're going to sing. I think I got a I got a program somewhere on there that says so let every voice and sing. So you know. Okay, my responsibility. Okay. All right, let's do it. Lights, camera, roll. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I've been in the room with you guys. <laughs> All right, it's coming. And we're going to be from Psalms. All right. All right, here we go. There we go. For Lord of all, I answer the name and all the earth. Who has set thy glory above the heavens? I have the mouth of this, and I have my day strength. Because I am this, that I might steal the enemy and the enemy. When I consider thy heaven, the work of thy things, the moon and the stars, if thou hast ordained. What is that? That thou art mine, and the son of man, thou art his. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou makest him to have the meaning over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field. The fire of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord. Uh, excellent with thy name in yeah. all of the earth. Yeah. Come on, give God a big hand of praise here today. All right, as we join in. Acapella. The very voice that sings ever to heaven ring. Ring with the harmony of liberty. Let all rejoice and rise, high as the evening's high. Let it reach down, loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song, full of the faith and the work that has taught us. Sing a song for the hope that the presence has brought us. Facing the rising sun, a new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road we trod, did a chastening rod, felt in the day when born, unborn had died, and with a steady beat, held out our weary to the place for which our father sighed. We have come over oh, the way that the tears have been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughter. Be past till now we stand and laugh. When the whitening of our past is past, God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, God who has brought. Let us 
sing to the light. She was forever in the past. We pray, bless our feet. Straight from the places I got where we met thee. Bless our hearts. Drunk with the wine of the world before death. Shadow beneath my heart. May we forever stand. Truth to our God. Truth to our name. Come on, get it out of here, friend. I'll tell you, he is worthy to be praised. I'll tell you, worthy to be praised. My heart is filled with gladness today because the Lord is able to do exceedingly above and beyond whatever we can ask or think. That has been our theme ever since we started back on a, uh, our telephone conference. And there's one thing to be able to understand the word as it is written and in print, but to see God in action, it just takes it to a whole new level. Mm, 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 mm. Amen. Amen. He woke me up this morning and started me on my way. Lord, He's blessing me right now, right now, right now. Let me see the hands of those who know the Lord is blessing you right now. You don't mind waving your hand. You don't mind sharing it. Well, we got to go on to the south side. We're going over on the south side. We're going way on the south side, brother. Amen. We're going down south here. We're going um, to the house of Elma Cover today. She's all adorned, and I don't know what this girl she got on here to but she looks good. I'm so glad to be here this morning. I just thank you, Lord, that I'm doing as well as I am. I know He can just bring anybody out of anything. And He can be so good to all of us. And even though we made it, we had bad brothers, we made it through it. Yeah. And we, right now, and I made it through everything we've been through. We both had surgery. Yeah. We both had our shot and right there again. Yeah. And we ready for the COVID, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, y'all, give me. Give, 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 I didn't tell y'all, I let her give a shot first and see how she was going to respond. She had been kicking up with me when I was going with this way. Come on now. Y'all look at this. Come on. Ooh, you're looking like new money today. That was not good if I would have been to you. God's been pretty good to me. I'm thankful for waking me up this morning. And right before I got here, around the corner, it was a Big crowd right in front of me. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, the devil, the devil's alive. Yes. So I thank God that I'm ready this morning. Give him a big hand to pray that we move on to the northwest side, northeast side. We're going to stop over here at the Lions. The Lions. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where to start. But I shared with my church family in Sunday school that it was a possibility that I would be homeless next week. Thank God. But just as God is coming back for us in the twinkling of the night, oh, yeah. uh -huh. so I found an apartment mm -hmm. in just a few words. God asked. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I've been blown, and I 
it like you're a king. All right. Come on, y'all. Give God a big hand to pray. I don't know how he's going to do it. All I know is when he showed up. All right. Yeah. Well, I can look out to hear one more from uh, Minister Ruth here because, you know, you would think that she had some wings on her the way she's been getting around, but I want to give her an opportunity to say something today. So I flew to Phoenix Service, so I'm going to celebrate her birthday with her, and uh, God brought me back, I'm back, I came back on yesterday, and God makes a way where there seems to be no way, amen. amen. For those of you who are out there in um, YouTube land, Facebook land, come to Sunday School. God is making a way out of no way, and he is lifting up his body of Christ, amen. Jesus, then come and find out about it. If you know a lot about it, come tell somebody else about it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, let's all give God a big hand of praise. Amen. Now, our uh, church clerk, she's uh, perusing the key movie. She, she'll never get it on her. She's got a style in her walk. Like, I'm walking like whatever's happening. <laughs> Um, who? Okay. Ms. Kofia, what about Ms. Kofia? Hi, Ms. Kofia. Yes, good morning, Pastor. Uh -huh. I just had to say, tomorrow is a special day. It's it your it is our member, Isaiah Hammond's birthday. Woo! I just want to give him a shout out. I think that's what they say. Yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday. Isaiah is such a dedicated man. Uh, he will come and pick you up. He will carry your packages. He will help you put your wig on. <laughs> I'm telling you, I can testify to the goodness of Isaiah Hammonds. I thank God for him. He was trained. Amen. I remember when he used to have those little cowboy boots on and kicking everybody and look at the bad man he is today. He raises his children well. He talks about the Lord. He is dedicated to helping others. I thank God for you, Isaiah. You Amen. are a special young man Amen. for God. Spreading God's word. Amen. I am so happy and privileged to know you all these years. Amen. And to God be the glory for your life. Continue blessings. Thank you, Pastor, for the Thank you. God bless you. Amen. 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 After all that, since I'm not on there, it's so gracious and help every Sunday. I think you need to be pinned today. Oh, Amen. 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 On our prayer request, we have Sister Gail Shopshire, Cassandra Nicodo, Ruth Baden, Mercy Evans, Laura Butler, Virginia Baum, Laura Copeland, Reverend Layton White, Sister Evelyn Copeland, who's here today, Sister Charlene Higgins, and Sister Josephine Coleman. Amen. Come join us each Sunday morning at 9 o'clock for breakfast. Followed by Sunday school and then BTU. Remember, if you know the Bible, the Sunday school needs you. If you don't know the Bible, you need the Sunday school and BTU. We are back on our prayer conference line every day at 12, at 12 noon. Uh, and we have our conference online, so for those who participate, continue to do so. As you all know, there's a black heritage this day. 
He said in the fellowship hall, you all go by and look at that. Our drum major mission statement is on the front of our program, it's on the inside of our program. It's on the count of three. Let's recite that together. One, two, three. In the name of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to the Lord. In the name of Christ, we are the mark of Christ, and we are the mark for Christ. And in the community, um, the very first anniversary of Pastor and Sister Bill Jones will be Sunday, March the 7th, at 1 8 11 a.m. So, due to COVID restrictions, the celebration will be broadcast live on Facebook. So, if you'd like to send a card or any form of congratulatory wishes, you may send them to our mail address. Sister Lettuce John is an anniversary chairperson. That's this coming Sunday. Yeah. Usually, when a Pastor Jones kicks off the anniversaries for uh, the churches, the black churches, and so the next one will be Pastor Hammers. Uh, we will be meeting, find out exactly what we're going to do, but we do know now that it will be the second Sunday in April. Amen. We also are listening up, we also have to do our planning. Find out what we can and cannot do, and we are going to make it happen. So, church, that's our pastor. Amen. This way, we should all belong to us, so we're going to take care of it. Amen. I want to encourage as many of you that can to go visit the Oklahoma Sports Museum. Uh, located right here in Guthrie at 315 West Harrison. This is a one of a kind museum that just happens to be in Guthrie. And if you haven't ever gone, now is the time to go. It's 315 West Oklahoma, right here in Guthrie. It's a fabulous museum. And so this, this month, he's putting on the black baseball major league players. We do happen to have one of those uh, pictures on the on our wall here, but it's no charge. So you so you try, try to figure out what can I do, what can I do with my children. Even if you're a man yourself, go down and visit this museum, and it's open from ten to four each day. So get, do yourself a favor. Go back and look at that museum and see what he's put out there. He's very very proud of it, and we are too. I remember when he called a few years ago and asked about a black baseball review right here in Guthrie. That's when he and I and everybody got stuck to pull that together. And it was one of the time. And I can tell you, Richard has not, has not forgotten that yet. He really wants us to do it again. But anyway, we, we, we sought out the uh, uh, Guthrie Black Spiders. That's the name of the team here in Guthrie, the Guthrie Black Spiders. When we looked up, we also interviewed with Brady Motor and other and other uh, baseball players right in the So y'all, y'all do yourself a favor, take your children, take yourself. It's no charge. 315 West Oklahoma, that's no problem. Thank you. And we have any visitors, so we'll have to be recognized. And we don't have any visitors. In the audience, it will be great. We have some visitors on YouTube and Facebook. So, what we say to you is that you are very, very welcome to First Baptist and that you're welcome anytime. But anytime, anytime that you're in the city, you need a church home, or you just might be a church destination. What is that? What is First Baptist? Now, no. no. what is First Baptist? No. No. What is First Baptist? No. No. God bless you, Thank you so much. A lot to be thankful for and we praise God for how good he has been to us. We're thankful for those of you who are attending our telephone prayer conference on Monday through Friday, 12 noon. We don't hold you all day. We shall be through by 12 30. Amen. We've been, uh, sometimes I give you some change back. Yeah. So uh, uh, we invite you to come. Uh, we have people from New York, Chicago, 
uh, North Carolina, San Antonio, Texas, Houston, Texas, uh, Ohio, California, and uh, throughout the state, Hollister, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Edmond, Enid. Uh, we have a vast uh, group that attends on our prayer conference, and we have a great and wonderful time. We were blessed uh, by a message from uh, Minister Ruth Wooten, and uh, I have to acknowledge this. We started this telephone prayer conference April 2020. In March uh, 2021, we recorded the largest audience that we have had since our story. And that was the day Ruth spoke. <laughs> and we had 48 people on the telephone line. Amen. That's the largest number that we had. And so uh, we just thank God for what he's doing. Uh, we are in the process of expanding uh, to include uh, Facebook, I mean, Facebook, um, um, Earth, Zoom, Zoom. And uh, we're working on that. And so soon we are to uh, have uh, uh, Zoom. And uh, listen, let me tell you something. This is the norm of the future. Facebook, YouTube, Zoom, all of that. This is the this is the new norm. So we might as well get used to it. Many of us will never see church like we used to see it. Amen. Well, we're talking, some are saying perhaps 2023 or we can safely gather without masks and social distance. But there's going to be a great number that's going to still be prepared about coming to the house of God. So what we experienced in the past, most of us won't see that again in our lifetime. If you follow the trend of the Spanish flu in 1917, 18, and how it took decades for things to get to what they call normal. So we're thankful for God for what we have. So guess what? We've got to make the best of a bad situation. I heard that on the radio. So. <laughs> Amen. We, and we got to do that. And so get used to learn Facebook, YouTube, Zoom, because this is our norm. Many jobs now are going to F, the parties of working at home using Zoom. Uh, training is going on on Zoom and all this kind of stuff. So whether you like it or not, I don't like it. Be honest with you. But I got to get used to it. Amen. Because if we're going to communicate with ourselves and with the world, we've got to get acclimated to these new norms. So I just thought I would just put that in there and let you know uh, what we are trying to do. God bless and keep you our uh, last of our black history uh, period coming from Sister Hammonds. All right, now I'll give her amen. She's been giving us a lot of good information. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm still trying to focus on some Oklahoma people, but um, for the children, I have this one ticket, uh, video games. There's an engineer, there was an engineer by the name of Gerald Lawson. Uh, he, had, he is credited for inventing, and he's the reason why we have uh, home-based Video games. 
he uh, he was known for his work in designing, and he he his first uh, thing he designed is called the Fairchild Chandelier. Yeah. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time with him because I got some stuff. But look up the name Jill Lawson. I can say he, he's he's the reason why we have on base video games and you can look on the TV screen and play. He was what he's the one who got uh Bill the Atari. Okay. Mm -hmm. He's he grew up in New York and he ended up being in Silicon Valley. You know what that is? That's the electronic iPhone, all the places like that. It's called Silicon Valley. That's where he ended up. All right. Now, some names I want you to know is uh, before Rosa Parks, before Rosa Parks, there was Claudette Coven. Claudette, C O L V I E. Huh? Amen. 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 She, she uh, refused to give a Percy a decade before Claudette and Rosa Parks. So in July 1944, she refused to give a Percy on a bus uh, in Virginia. Third um, Wood Marshal was held on it, and there was a lot that came forth uh, about riding buses over long distance because of her. Now Claudette Coben was a 15-year-old she was in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, nine months before they staged, the Rosa Parks was a staged, but this girl was not staged. She did her on purpose. She had thought listening to, uh, they had Black History Week at it, and in her school. And she decided that she was going to be a Harriet Tubman. She said Harriet Tubman was on one side of her, and the other lady was on the other side of her. And they was telling her, don't you do it, don't you do it. <laughs> so, 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 no, she, so she, she refused to give up her seat. So she was arrested at 15 years old. And uh, they told her to get up. She refused to get up, the police. She stood there with no books on her lap and she refused to move. The police handcuffed her and dragged her off the bus. Now the NAACP knew about it, but they refused to use her because she was a teenager and figured she'd be unpredictable. So read the story. All right. Um, also, there was a 13-year-old named Hezekiah Watkins. He's known as the youngest uh, freedom writer. His mom told him not to, not to go down there with the protest when the freedom writers were. He disobeyed. So as <laughs> he disobeyed, he said he remembered watching the evening news where the dogs were biting people, uh, people being spit on, beat up, and he just couldn't understand why. So he had to see what was going on. So in the midst of people being hit, beat in, and arrested, he was arrested. When he was arrested, he wasn't told why he was arrested. He was not charged. He was sent straight to prison and put on death row. 13 years old. Wow. He's still alive today. Amen. <laughs> He's 73 years old. Amen. Five days after he was put in prison, this was in Mississippi, Governor Ross Bennett ordered his release. So look his name up, Hezekiah Watkins. Okay. Now, um, let's see. May Jimson. The first African American astronaut to travel in space. Yeah. And then the next two out there Joyce Jackson. Oh, don't forget uh, Rilla Johnson. You know, she was our first black congressperson in Oklahoma City. Okay. There was also um, a black female in Oklahoma City that was the first uh, African American female captain on the police force. I have a name somewhere. Joyce Jackson is, is a journalist. She's still alive. She was one of the members of uh, Clara Reaper's group that did the sit-ins. She was part of the Cat's Road Store sitting in the city in 1958. Um, so she uh, also became a uh, journalist. She was the first 
black journalist in Oklahoma City, and she worked at KLCO Channel 5. And Channel 5 today will have a, at 6 o'clock a black history presentation. They have all the channel here that has done the, the big, big presentations. Every day they've done a presentation. <laughs> okay, so I, my last one. Is our Luther Oklahoma. There was a time in Oklahoma and many parts of the country where African Americans were not allowed to be in certain places after sunset. When I was a kid in high school, I looked at my I never asked my mom again. <laughs> we was on the bus to lunch at a football game, and it was in Henry and there was a sign. Blacks do not be out after sunset. And I was like, because <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have that stuff where I did. You can see it on TV, but I don't like it. That it never happened. So anyway, uh, they were they were known as uh, sundown towns. In many instances, uh, this made it dangerous for white people to travel long distances by car. But one of them whole place served as a safe haven for travelers for decades. Much of the 20th century was a scary time for Black Americans. If they happened to be out in a sundown, sundown town, they used being beaten, chased out of town, or even lynched just because of the color of the skin. But the Greek service station was a place of refuge, not only for Black Oklahomans, but for Black people across the United States. Uh, this building is located along Route 66. Route 66 travels from the East Coast to the West Coast. And uh, George Henderson did part of this presentation. He is a uh, University of Oklahoma professor of emeritus of human relations, sociology, and education. And he said, for black Americans, I am traveling down Route 66, came, didn't come without risk. There were citizen towns where you could go in and buy things during the day, but at night you, had, you couldn't go there. Uh, they could, in essence, there was a message that we don't want you really here. Henderson is a civil rights activist and was one of the first African American professors at OU. He said that Oklahoma had a few sundown towns, and I told him King Randall was one, uh, Norman and Edmond. And some other areas, and some areas near Tulsa, also were sundown towns. In some towns, uh, they would say the N word, and you don't let the sun, that, sun go down and catch you there. Henderson said one place along the iconic Highway 66 that black travelers could visit without fearing for their safety was Street Service Station near Luther. This was just almost heaven on earth, said Reverend Allen Green grandson of the service station founder. Reed said his grandfather built the service station in 1915. Word got around that it was a place where people knew that they could safely shop and rest during their travels. And you know, they had a green book when I was where that this is the place in the United States where blacks could safely stop when they traveled. It was a modern day, this was really a big shop. It was a modern day 7 Eleven. They could stop by and get bread, water, and even neighbors around the service station that lived three, four miles away could come and buy some groceries. They could get uh, gas, black sticks. They could come in and sit down, get something to drink, get a hot dog and hamburger. This was a place that people felt comfortable. He said, everyone from black movie stars, athletes, Traveling the east to west, stop through the death service station. The service station closed a decade ago, but uh, Mitt Reverend Creek and his cousin Edward were working to restore and preserve the historic landmark. In 1995, uh, that site was put on the National Register of Historic Places. So they are currently uh, working to build it up. And he said, We want for this place to be a death. Uh, destination where people can advance our stopping and stopping 
to every travel, every three ten. We expect that at some point we will be able to sell souvenirs that represent the highway and the family. Uh, the two hope to continue raising awareness to educate young generations about the place that served as a safe haven for so many people at a time when they weren't welcome in their own country. And one other thing, if you look up the race riot in Tulsa and the Harlem Renaissance and the Great Migration. Now, the, in Oklahoma history, they just now are going to put either uh, the end of this year or first of next year in the history books about the Tulsa race riot and the city. Those are not in the Oklahoma history books. The only place that you can find it currently is on the Oklahoma is, is part of the Oklahoma Education Association online curriculum. And that was only this year. All right, amen. A lot of history. Uh, some of you all are old enough that here, but I think that you remember those signs yeah. in Oakbeard Highland Park. You remember uh, that the uh, tennis court was for white zone. You all know who uh, helped to first integrate that? You all know who did? Leroy Green. He took his racket over there and uh they told him he couldn't play and he went down on the court and started bouncing his ball getting the ball back and forth and uh they didn't put him in jail not that they didn't do anything to him and from then on that started playing right over there uh not high enough, mineral wells i said mineral wells and he was the uh he 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 moved back here from chicago somewhere and uh, they could play it there. So he just uh, took his little racket and went on down there. And, and y'all remember the B Bar Green? <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, Reverend Noble would say he was a little piece of leather, but he was well put together. <laughs> God bless you. God keep you in our prayer. And um, we're going to have our uh, altar prayer this week. Amen, 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 amen. God's been so good to us. Um, it's amazing how God works things out, out for us. Amen. amen. And so we want to go to the throne room of grace because grace and mercy is what's kept us and has us here today. And it's not been any goodness of our own, but it's only because of his grace and his mercy. Father, we come right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we want to come with thanksgiving. We want to thank you, God, that you are still showing your presence. Right now, God, we ask you to come and just dwell among us in this place, God. Help us to forget about ourselves, God, and just look to the hills from what's come of our help and know that our help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are an almighty, all-present God. And God, we stand in awe of what you are doing, God. So many people are looking at the negative, but God, we look at the positive. We look how you love us enough to send your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. Father, we look how you wrapped yourself in flesh and came to earth. Father, we look at one another, God, and see how good you've been to us in spite of all the things that we've done. And so we come with thanksgiving, allowing you to touch our hearts, touch our mind, touch our soul, touch our spirit, God, that we'll be better Christians, that we'll love you with all of our heart, with all of our mind, God, that we'll bow down before you, that we will not be ashamed of you in the presence of others, that we'll lift up our hands to you, God, that we'll acknowledge that you are who you say you are to us, God. 
Bless this congregation. Bless this city. Bless the country. Bless our pastor, God. Continue to pour out your spirit, Lord. We take none of this for granted, God, that you have come to ask us to join you at what you're doing, God. And it's not because we're so good, but it's because you continue to pour out your spirit and your blessing on us. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, those who are sick in their body, sick in their mind, sick in their spirit, Lord. We ask God for a transformation in their life right now, God. God, we see so much stuff, God, on Facebook and YouTube. People crying out for help, Lord. Help us not to turn away from them, but turn toward them, God, and tell them, you can come to a God who is living, that's not dead, that he knows who you are. He knows what space you're in. And Father, even as we study in Sunday school today, God, that you are trusting women, God. And God, just all type of women, prostitutes, God, rich women, poor women, men, who, women who need their mind regulated, God. You're calling us all, God, not a respected person. And so we thank you in advance, God, and we ask you to come. Bless all who are hearing us today, God. Let them not be weary, God, but let them be bold and claim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Open their hearts up, God, in the name of Jesus, that they might receive this glorious gospel. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, get out of here. Come on, get out of here. I don't know about you, but I know that he is worthy. Oh, my praise. And the Bible says that the redeemed of the Lord say so. The heaven to say so for me, Lord. You ought to just wave your hand like you don't even care. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. I tell you what, I'm, my heart is filled with joy today. I'm thankful for that being Luke the tenth chapter verses uh, twenty seven uh, to thirty seven. Twenty eight to thirty seven. All right, amen. Luke ten. Yes, this is a continuation of yes, the last Sunday uh, when we talked about from seclusion to Savior and how uh, the Samaritan was in seclusion because of how the Jews treated the Samaritans. And with the uh, man coming down from Jerusalem on the Jericho Road, fell among thieves and they robbed him and left beat him and left him to bed, he became salvation for this man. And so today, we're going to revisit but that we're going to revisit. Just like you revisit your wife's cooking every day. <laughs> we're going to revisit the scripture once again. In Luke's gospel, the 10th chapter, beginning at verse number 28. Okay? Let's do 27 first. Uh, maybe you better go back to 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What well, is written in the law? I'll read it, sir. And he answered, said, uh, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this is thee, and thou shalt live. But he willingly, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him at thee. 
And by chance, there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the that uh, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which of these three, thinkest thou, was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. <laughs> then Jesus said unto him, Go and do likewise. Amen. Word of God for the people of God. I, I want to tag the text with this topic today. Like a good neighbor. Amen. Like a good neighbor. 19, since 1971, for over 50 years, like a good neighbor. State Farmers there has expressed the brand of the Bloomington based insurance company. Being a good neighbor has been always and will always be a part of the State Farm DNA. Since uh, the State Farm Company's found foundation, they encourage. Uh, their associates and uh, their retirees to be good neighbors by giving back to the community where they live. One option is not participating in what they call the Good Neighbor Grant Individual Team Programs. Through the Good Neighbors Grant Team Program, State Farm Companies Foundation awards $500 grants on behalf of eligible State Farm employees, their agents, their retirees who volunteer for a minimum of 40 hours per calendar year to eligible nonprofit organizations. But I think the most of us. Uh, we associate the advertising jingle with an agent showing up in uh, whatever need that their client may be going through, and all the client has to do is say or sing like a good neighbor, stay from me there. All of a sudden, <laughs> this agent springs forth. And uh, is able to handle the situation. Well, well, we don't have that kind of a jingle that we can say to express what being a good neighbor is. All we know is Jesus is on the main line. You can tell him what you want. In our text, as a continuation of last week, it is one of showing mercy and compassion. It denotes concern. It denotes empathy in feeling uh, uh, another person. Uh, you can be sympathetic, but not empathetic. To be empathetic means that you know what a person is going through. You've been there and done that. You can be sympathetic by going in your pocket and coming up with resources to help that individual to get over the hump. But in our text, we have one of both empathy and sympathy. In the Bible, mercy and 
compassion are the, are the most demonstrated characteristics of God in his infinite wisdom. You know, loving one another as God has loved us is an internal and external way of showing us that God is real. Anybody know he is real? If, uh, if one has a heart of a neighbor, he will see his neighbor in need and help his neighbor. However, this context of our text is one that Jesus is has been rejected. And uh, it, we should also note that this story, some call it a parable, but um, Jesus does not mention a parable. He just says that a certain man went down. Now, I don't get into a debate or argument whether it's a story or a parable. They just said Jesus told the story. So I'm just going to stick with what the text says. He told the story. That we want to call the parable. That's your business. But the Samaritan, as I said on last week, was an outcast. See, he was, a, uh, he was the only one that came to the rescue of uh, this particular man. Jesus was like that Samaritan y'all. He was the outcast one. He was the one who was willing to seek and to save those which were lost. He was directly opposed by the religious establishment. But guess what? He goes on because uh, he said, I came to seek and to save those who were lost. And so the theme of Jesus is going uh, here uh, needs to be explored. Uh, in uh, the comparison and contrast of this particular Samaritan. Are y'all still with me here? Because we have to understand that in Micah the sixth chapter, he has told you, old man, what is good and what does the God require of thee, but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. And so for the Christian, to be a good neighbor, we got to either put up or uh, shut up. Can you hear in the Gospel of Luke, uh, Minister Wooden, in the 35th chapter, I mean the 6th chapter, verses 35 to 36, where Jesus said, but love your enemy and do good and lend expecting nothing in return and your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and to the evil. Be merciful, even as your father is in, uh, and your father is merciful. And so this Samaritan demonstrates the character and uh, of God and how when God comes into an individual's life, he's able uh, to make that individual Yes, yeah, to become more like him and less like himself. And I get with it. To be a good neighbor, my brothers and sisters, may mean, first of all, that there's something in your past that you need to overcome. To be a good neighbor means something in your past uh, that you need to overcome. And don't let anybody fool you. All of us got a past. All of us used to be something. Can I get away with it? Yeah, yeah. Amen. And, and many of us are products of our society. Amen. It is stated that, that racism is, is, is taught by parents and is a part of a culture. That's why you can see little babies in, in the nursery and toddlers are getting along with each other, hugging each other, because they've been taught racism. Amen. Amen. And, and, and because of some of our teaching, yeah, we, there are some things within us that we need to overcome. In chapter 9, you'll discover the disciples that Jesus had handpicked. I don't know them. He handpicked them. And, and, and they had some past 
and present issues that they needed to overcome. And you would think that just because Jesus had handpicked them, uh, Brother Allen, that, that they would be a cut above. But guess what? They were no different than you and I. <laughs> Amen. Amen. They, they had their issues. When Bell was both running down somebody to me and telling me what they, that person ain't did to that, I said, man, listen to me. Then I said, when they get through, I said, now tell me what's wrong with you. Because there's something wrong with all of us. <laughs> there's something wrong with Jesus' disciples. Again, the disciples uh, are caught up in the extremity of fighting theological battles in chapter 9, verses 49 and 50. That they felt, uh, Harina, that they were the guardians of the truth and they wanted to stamp out uh, the unorthodoxy. In other words, uh, if anyone was not a part of their clique and didn't go along with their agenda, they were ready to wipe them out. The disciples had come across, and yes, uh, in that uh, ninth chapter, a man who was casting out demons in Jesus' name. And since this unnamed man wasn't a part of their clique, uh, <laughs> and they didn't give him the authority, mm -hmm, yeah, to act in Jesus' name uh, because of their own unsupported view. They requested Jesus to put a stop to it. In Jesus' reply, it seemed to be indicating that we need Jesus' in reply seems to be saying, listen, boys, we need all the help we get. <laughs> if they not against us, they are for us. Can I get a witness here? And on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus wanted to stay at Samaria. Uh, in the Samaritan village, but uh, the villagers would not accept him or receive him. Later, James and John urged a course of action that uh, was both dramatic and exciting. Because this was a Samaritan village, Larry, a group of people that were despised by the Jews, yeah, they wanted to destroy the town that had refused to receive Jesus uh, and, and wanted Jesus to rebuke them. And matter of fact, he, he wanted them to, uh, wanted Jesus to cat, uh, uh, bring down a uh, lightning upon them and wipe them out. But you know what? Uh, you got some churches and pastors like that. If, if, if they don't go and, that, and you don't follow their agenda, uh, they don't want to have nothing to do with you and, and they're ready to wipe you out. But I can hear Jesus say, yeah, uh, 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 you need to take a look at yourself. And you know, uh, uh, we all got some issues that we got to deal with. And, and, and when you take people uh, who, who feel like that, they are the authority. They, they are uh, one that God consults before he makes a move. Those kind of people are dangerous to themselves and to you. But right here in America, since the presidential election in November, Trump supporters have been have not been very neighborly. Their anger and their hostility, hostility among fellow Americans have pitted neighbor against neighbor. Instead of accepting the laws, that their candidate laws, they marched in protest. And on January the 6th, 2021, Trump supporters tried to derail the confirming the confirmation of the electoral college vote by an assault on the seat of democracy, the White House. Yeah, they tried to uh, uh, they tried to derail the uh, results of the electoral college by an assault on uh, elected officials. That's not very neighborly. Matter of fact, it is anti-America. And because some of them feel like, uh, yeah, they are the, the guardians of the truth, justice, and the American way, anyone who does not look like them and does not gather with them, they are ready to annihilate. That's not being very neighborly. 
regardless as to the outcome of the election, we are still American citizens. Somebody grow talking about. It. Regardless as to the outcome of the election, we are still needing to treat each other with decency and respect. This sometimes meaning that we must overcome our differences through being a good neighbor. Can I agree with that? Listen, my brothers and sisters, America is living in a very dark chapter of its history. The Samaritan syndrome still exists. We're still making judgment calls based on the color of a person's skin. It's not just directed at African Americans. It's anyone who does not look like me. Built into our society is to look down upon people because of uh, they are different. We often seem to mistreat people because of those differences. A good neighbor means that there is something I must overcome. This is a good time to turn the searchlight up on yourself. To see what is in your life that you need to overcome in order that you might be a good neighbor. But secondly, in the text, it helps me understand not only are there some things in my life that I might need to overcome, but being a good neighbor means taking advantage of the opportunity to be a good neighbor. Can I get a witness? It means to take advantage of uh, the opportunity to be a good neighbor. You see, this Samaritan uh, was one who had been rejected. And uh, he demonstrates the love of God in uh, his actions and in his purpose. And when you look at the text, Luke chapter 10, verses 30 and 31, in response to the lawyer's question, who is my neighbor? A question he poses to Jesus with the intent of entrapping Jesus, Jesus tells the story about a certain man who left Jerusalem. Jesus turns the tables on him, and Jesus allows him to answer his own question. Yeah, notice the text says, a certain man who left Jerusalem on his way down to Jericho. This man, the text identifies, uh, as one who fell among thieves that robbed him of his possession and beat him, leaving him and did. Now, that 17 mile stretch from Jerusalem to Jericho was a dangerous travel highway. It was one that was full of bandits who were willing to bushwhack you and uh, rob you and to capture you and to strip you and to take everything that you had. This bandage, these thieves, these robbers uh, represent Satan uh, while we're on our journey down on the worship place. You know how it is to come to church after time, praise the Lord, and the devil is sitting out there. Yeah, in the point you say, I'm waiting on you. I got something for you. But I discovered, uh, Sister Ellen asked me, sometimes the devil don't even wait till you get out of church to come up and miss you. Your Jericho Road may start up as soon as the benediction goes. Matter of fact, you and I have witnessed even in the church where the woman said, I'll take off my hat and read. Get it on right here. This is my brothers and sisters. This is a dangerous time for someone to travel. And this 17 mile stretch was full of families where people could hide and ambush you and bushwhack you. But notice something. And the text says a certain man that give his name, that tell us his name much about it. It said a certain man. Can I help you understand something? That certain man could represent you and I on the Jericho Road trying to make our way, uh, yeah, to the promised land. And I want somebody to know something here that this world is not our home. We are the pilgrim traveling through this barren land. And along the way, there's some difficulty that you and I got to face. But can you hear our ancestors who could not read their names and watch our letters out? That Father, I stretch my hand to me to cross that door and help my friend. Uh, he, he's a certain man. Now. He's a certain man. Now. He's a certain man. Uh, 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 the text also said there was a, 
a certain priest. Of the certain priest. Then give him a name. Uh, and trying to make excuses for him. Why he didn't go over there. But this priest represented, uh, yes, uh, the law. He represented uh, the law uh, for the people to follow. But the text said, a certain priest, he uh, looked at the man and he passed over on the other side. You see, when you think about the opportunity, God will often, uh, yeah, thrust you into a position uh, where you got to put up or shut up. He often thrusts us into a position of uncomfortableness in order for us to let go and let not. But instead of the priest, a certain priest, he, instead of him rolling up his sleeve, uh, he decided he could just cross over on the other side. And also said, likewise, uh, the Levite. In other words, there's a certain Levite in here who represents uh, the denomination. He represents uh, the structured church. He represents uh, the organization. Uh, and the text said that he even crossed over on the other side. Now, now what am I simply trying to say? That we don't need uh, organizations when we're in trouble now to tell us what we should have been doing. Come on and talk to me. We don't need somebody pointing to us the law when we're down in the dump. We need somebody who's going to be a good neighbor and uh, Can I get a witness here? A certain man, a certain man, preach, a certain uh, Levite. But notice something uh, that was a certain Samaritan. Now, 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 I looked up the word certain. And, and, and it didn't give me a whole lot other than a person to be identified. Now, a certain Samaritan, a couple with the Jewish trend, seems to be out of, out of whack, out of place. But let me tell you something. God is able to take our uncertainties and nurse certainness out of it. Somebody wrote a about here. He said, a certain Samaritan. Now, I want you to know something about the certain Samaritan. That the certain Samaritan said he was on his journey. Now, the, the priest and the Levite, they just happened to show up to where they, they were, where the, where the man was. But this Samaritan, he had a purpose in his projection. He had a course of action that he had to deviate from in order to give attention to the need that was in front of him. I looked up this word and said, he saw him. In other words, he didn't do a bad visual glance at the man. But the text says, and he saw him, uses the word octopus. When we get the word optical, that seems like to say that he saw with 20 20 vision. His eyes got big. He saw this man. Somebody, have you ever heard somebody, they walk by and say, Oh, I didn't see you. How you gonna miss me? How you gonna miss me? Somebody's good looking as I am. How you Yeah, you, you had that happen after you got, oh, I didn't see you. You know, you didn't see me. So don't try to be my glasses. But the text says in this Greek word that his eyes got big and he focused with 20 20 vision. Can you see him? Yeah. <laughs> now, he's a certain He's on his way somewhere. Now, he is a frequent traveler along this road. How do you know he's a frequent traveler? Because when he uh, goes 